Epic cards are the second rarest tier of card in Hearthstone, and are depicted by a purple gem in the center of each card. They typically have some of the more unique effects in the game, and usually require synergy with other cards to work at their maximum potential. Over the years, some of these cards have had effects which have been either too niche, or have had no good support cards to help it. So don't be too surprised if you don't recognize a lot of the cards in this list, since a lot of them see almost no play at all. And as a unique thing in this video, we'll also be going over some changes Blizzard could make to make these forgotten cards be at least a little bit more playable. And at number 10, we have Death Axe Punisher. This 4 mana 3-3 three, three, when played gives a random lifesteal minion in your hand, plus 2, plus 2. Lifesteal is a keyword that's just like lifelink from Magic the Gathering, which lets a card heal your hero equal to the amount of damage it deals. The only problem is, there are only maybe 10 playable lifesteal minions in the entire game, out of over 4,000 cards in the game. I just find it kind of funny how Blizzard decided the most fitting effect for this dude with a mohawk, holding an Arcanite Reaper, and fighting off ghouls, was to have it buff lifesteal minions of all things, and have no relation at all to weapons. Whereas most other bad epic minions have ways to build a deck around their condition, or have ways to mitigate their bad effects, Death Axe Punisher is almost always just going to be a 4 mana 3-3 three, three with no effect. The only reason I didn't put this card much lower on this list is because it does have amazing synergy with Zilliax which is still a great standalone card in most decks. Zilliax is basically just a mess of keywords, but it essentially can immediately attack, freely trade into a minion, force enemies to attack into it, and has lifesteal. And as a general rule, the more keywords a card has, the more it benefits from any slight increases of stats, like a free plus two plus two provided by Death Axe. Unfortunately, there are already a bunch of other ways to buff minions which completely outclasses Death Axe Punisher. Cards like Mark of the Lotus, Grim Street Outfitter, Azjara's Gardens can also buff lifesteal minions if needed, as well as the rest of your hand or board. I think it wouldn't be too off to buff Death Axe Punisher to be a 4 mana 4-4, four four, so that you don't lose a ton of tempo, as well as making its lifesteal buff a plus 3 plus 3, just because of how few good lifesteal minions there are to even benefit off of its effect. And at number 9, we have Mortuary Machine. This 5 mana 8 8 mech gives minions your opponent plays reborn, which is a keyword which summons a minion with 1 health after it dies. This card is the third card in a series of 5 mana 8 8s with heavy downsides attached to them. But unlike the other two, Mortuary Machine was actually way worse. When you first compare it to Fell Reaver, which burns 3 cards whenever your opponent plays 1, and Brittle Tide Hydra, which deals 3 damage to your hero every time it takes damage, you may think giving enemy minions reborn is about the same level of downside. And while Fel Reaver and Hydra's effect can potentially kill you, they don't have any immediate effect on board. Your opponent can play all the cards they want to get you to fatigue with Fel Reaver, or deal up to 24 damage by damaging Bitter Tide Hydra, but neither of those will win back the board for them. Against Mortuary Machine, all they have to do is play a couple of taunt minions, and suddenly they have a nearly invincible board that you can't break through. The whole point of 5 mana 8-8s and aggro decks was to put out so many stats during the mid-game that your opponent couldn't do anything to stop it from constantly crashing into their face. But because it was so easy to stall Mortuary Machine while building up a board that could freely trade into opponent's boards, it really never saw any plain wild or standard. The only reason this card isn't lower on this list is because it has the amazing 8-8 stat line that could cheese out some wins against unprepared decks that aren't packing any top minutes. As is, I think the card is pretty perfect, though if I had to rework it, I would make its effect to summon any minion your opponent drew to fit the mummy theme that other cards had. And at number 8, we have Chromatic Egg. This 5 mana 0-3 minion lets you secretly choose 1 to 3 dragons when you play it, and hatches it when this minion dies. This card follows the theme of other egg cards in the game, which are 0 attack minions which have great effects if you manage to hatch it. And by hatch, I mean find a way to manually kill it since 0 attack minions can't attack at all in Hearthstone. For as clunky and convoluted as they may seem, a ton of eggs have actually seen competitive play over the years in tons of different decks. Boneweb Egg was in Discard Warlock, Nerubian Egg saw play in Death Rattle Hunters, and Runic Egg was played as a minion to trigger Plague of Flames. So why is Chromatic Egg so bad when compared to a Mechano Egg? which are both pretty similar cards? For one, Chromatic Egg's payoff stats are inconsistent at best. The reason it was printed with the text secretly discovered was so that if your opponent found out the best option you had to hatch was a 3-4 dragon, your opponent might actually feel sorry for you. It also doesn't really have any synergy. Despite hatching a dragon, most dragon synergy cards out there require you to hold one in your hand, not to have one on the board. Compare that to Mechano Egg, which is a mech and can easily be buffed by other mechs. And because it's just so expensive at 5 mana, and does nothing when you play it, it's guaranteed to lose you tempo and be ignored by your opponent. It's also not that hard for your opponent to play around it if they have to, since they can just silence the egg which removes its effect. 
or kill you since you wasted 5 mana on an egg that did nothing. Chromatic Egg could easily be fixed to only offer you dragons that cost 8 mana or more, which definitely have enough stats to compensate for how slow and expensive it is. And at number 7, we have Enchanted Cauldron. This 3 mana 1-6 minion has the effect where, after you play a spell once, it casts a random spell of the same mana cost. This card just has a terrible stat distribution and not enough going on to help make it worth playing. Unless a card has a really good continuous effect, having extremely high health and low attack is usually not worth it since it can't kill anything or contest the board. Cards like Armorsmith and Jeeves can get away with it since their potentially game-winning effects come from surviving on the board for as long as possible. Spellburst, on the other hand, is a keyword that only triggers once on a card and never again, and is ideally activated as soon as it's played. And it's not like Enchanted Cauldron has bad stats either. In fact, having 7 total stats on a 3 mana card is pretty ideal. As for its effect, you really don't want to be relying on random effects for your value cards since they'll either do nothing or suck most of the time. Add on to the fact that you'll probably be playing at most a 4 mana spell with it, and the possible range of good spells to get really aren't that high. I get that not every card has to have premium stats, and in this case, is probably intended to survive in the late game so you can play an expensive spell with it, but there are so many easier ways to generate value from this random effect. For one, anytime you draw or discover a card, you're usually getting a card you want and can time when to play it, rather than by randomly casting a spell with Cauldron. In fact, there's another epic neutral Cauldron, which couldn't even attack and still saw a ton of play. I think Enchanted Cauldron, in keeping with the spell burst theme, could cast a random spell of the same cost and add one to your hand, just so there's a smaller chance of it completely whiffing. I could also see its stats being adjusted to a 3 mana 2-5, which is a good stat line while still having enough health if you want to save it for a more expensive spell. And at number 6, we have Hollomancer. This 5 mana 3-3 three three has the effect where after your opponent plays a minion, this summons a 1-1 copy of it. Hollomancer is the prime example of a cool card that is just too squishy to be useful. Being able to create a board using your opponent's minion in concept is quite a good tech card, but it's just too easy to play around in practice. 3 mana on a 5 mana minion, no matter how good, is just too much of a liability considering how almost every good cheat removal spell deals exactly 3 damage. And because Holomancer summons 1-1 copies of your opponent's minions, if they play any battle cry or buffed up minions, in practice they'll function as normal 1-1s, since summoning doesn't activate battle cry effects. In fact, the only common minions I can really think of that have an effect that works with Holomancer are Ship's Cannon and Battleground Battlemaster. To actually break even, you have to summon something like four of your opponent's minions, considering how the era of cards which would benefit Holomancer, like Ragnaros, are long gone. And to top it off, because this card summons a 1-1 after your opponent plays a minion, if they happen to play a battle cry which kills Holomancer, it won't summon that 1-1 minion. As is, Holomancer is just completely outclassed by Morshan Watchposts which is cheaper and punishes minions harder, or Ogremancer, which is a beefier Holomancer that punishes plain spells. I could see Blizzard buffing Holomancer to summon 2-2 two -two copies instead. Also trigger whenever your opponent summons a minion instead of after your opponent plays a minion, and to at least be a 3-6. As is though, Holomancer is just too weak and needs to summon too many minions to be any good. And speaking of bad 5 mana epic cards. At number 5 we have Darkspeaker. This 5 mana 3-6 simply swaps this minion stats with another friendly minion, and is the only minion I'm aware of that does this. The only issue is, to this day, I can't think of a single card that is so desperate for stats that it wants to play 5 mana to become a 3-6. The only thing you have to remember is that you're always playing 5 mana for 9 stats, whether you're playing Darkspeaker on an empty board or swapping stats with a 1-1. And what makes Darkspeaker crack the top 5 on this list is the fact that nearly every buff benefit cards function off of attack and not health. Blade Master Samuro, Rat Pack, and Sergeant Sally are some examples, and even then there are some more cheaper, faster, and more efficient alternatives, if you just want to buff attack. In fairness, Darkspeaker is a really old card, and I'm sure Blizzard was afraid of it swapping stats with the minion on board and potentially dealing unavoidable damage. Even in the best case of using the stat swap on a small minion to get a good value trade in, or to give it more health to live for longer, it's just not worth paying 5 mana for such a minor effect. If Darkspeaker lets you swap its stats with any minion, it would be way less bad and potentially playable. Even reworking its stats to be, at minimum, a 6-3 would put it on par with Leroy Jenkins, serve as a funny way to reduce the health of big taunt minions, while still being a low-statted situational minion that relies on board synergy to get decent value. And at number 4, we have Fel Orc Soulfiend. 
This 3 mana 3-7 three deals 2 damage to itself at the start of each of your turns. Don't let this card stats fool you, because this card is worse than literally every single 3 mana 3-3 three three for no good reason. So why is that? When you first play Fel Orc, he starts off as a 3-7. Let's assume that your opponent plays a 2 mana 3-2 and passes. On your turn, Fel Orc takes damage and is a 3-5, and is pretty good for a 3 mana card. Let's say that your opponent trades into Fel Orc, meaning at the start of your next turn, Fel Orc immediately dies without having a chance to attack. The reason I say it's worse than the normal 3-3 is that by the time Fel Orc's summoning sickness wears off and it's ready to attack, it's that it's really only good for two attacks into your opponent's face before it dies, whereas a normal 3-3 could attack an infinite number of times without dying. I think the intent was that you were supposed to continuously heal your Fel Orc to gain value off of its massive health in a class like Priest. The problem is, it is really expensive to continuously heal your Fel Orc, and your opponent can just face tank its damage until it dies to gain a massive man advantage if needed. And because the damage step occurs at the start of your turn, before you can do anything, Fel Orc is actually a 3-5 in practice. This means your opponent just has to get it down to 2 health on their turn, and it'll kill itself before you can even attack with it. If they wanted to make it at least comparable to Injured Blademaster, they should have made Fel Orc deal damage to itself at the end of your turn, so you can attack at least twice with it or give it more health, since healing it constantly will still cost quite a bit of mana. And at number 3, we have Desert Obelisk. This 5 mana 0 5 minion, if you call it that, deals 5 damage to a random enemy, but only if you manage to control 3 of these things at the end of your turn. This card actually made it into our top 10 hardest win conditions to build around video, and for good reason. It's almost comical how unreasonable of a task it is to get at least 3 of these things on board in a normal game, much less use them to find a way to kill your opponent. First of all, assuming that you're playing without mana cheating, if you want to kill your opponent with them, you'll need to play at least 30 mana worth of obelisks and have them all on board at the same time. And with only 5 health, which even some 2 drops manage to catch, it is insanely easy to kill them once they're on the board. On top of that, in Hearthstone you're only allowed to include 2 copies of a card in your deck, meaning you have to find some other way to add an extra obelisk to your hand, which isn't cheap. Or if you do manage to get the combo on board, your opponent can just play a couple of cheap minions to take the 5 damage lasers, since the obelisks randomly target enemies. And if you do finally manage to get your obelisk on an empty board, all your opponent has to do is leave you with two of them since they can only activate if you have three or more. The only possible way I've seen this card be remotely playable is in an Avionic Cun OTK, but that combo essentially gives you infinite mana to play any minions or combos you want. But otherwise, in normal play, if you happen to randomly generate this thing, you might as well kiss 5 of your mana goodbye. If Blizzard really wanted to push a Desert Obelisk, I could see them either giving it more health, scaling it down to be tiny, or even triggering with just two of them on board. Either way, Obelisk is just so bad right now it's not even worth building a meme deck around, which is why it deserves a number 3 spot on this list. And at number 2, we have the Emerald Hive Queen. This 1 mana 2-3 beast makes your minions cost 2 more mana while it's on the field. While you might think that there are a ton of minionless or few minion decks in Hearthstone, most good effects are tied to the battle cries on minions. You see, because of how Blizzard split up the classes, there are no neutral spells or weapons really, meaning that a vast, vast majority of all cards in Hearthstone are minions. A 1 mana 2-3 is honestly not enough stats for a card that locks you out of 80% of your potential cards and isn't really worth protecting. The more you buff this thing up with spells as an early game threat, the longer you lock yourself out of playing any minions with a steep tax. And don't forget, this effect is one-sided, meaning your opponent is free to play their minions at their normal cost while you have to suffer Hive Queen's effect. In fact, if your opponent ever does play this god-awful card, it's probably the right play to just never attack into it and play your cards as usual. Even if you don't have any immediate answers to it on turn 1, it deals so little damage over time and is probably the only minion your opponent can play until turn 3 that it's worth just ignoring. I think Blizzard intended for Hive Queen to be played in control decks as a way to contest the board against aggro decks like Deathlord, since they assume control decks wouldn't want to play any other cheap minions. The problem is, Hive Queen is just tanky enough where you can't easily kill her off when you need to, and doesn't have high enough tack to ever really pressure your opponent. I could see Blizzard buffing this card to be a 3-4, so they can be included in silence decks, or just rework it so it made all minions cost 2 more mana, though this would probably make it more OP than the already very popular Nerubar Weblord. And at number 1, we have Gurubashi Offering. This 1 mana 0 2 minion destroys itself at the start of your next turn and gives you 8 armor, which is basically additional health for your hero. Let us know if you remember this card because we definitely forgot this card existed at all when we were researching this video. Wow, so where do we even start? This card is like if you took Alarmabot and Doomslayer, but instead of giving it a good start of turn effect, 
you gave it a completely useless effect and gave it enough health to barely just survive a slight sneeze. I can understand giving other egg-like cards low health so they can get their death rattle effects off sooner, but on a card that you need to survive until your next turn? That isn't to say 8 armor isn't a lot. In fact, cards like Frozen Buckler and Bring It On saw playing control borders just because they gained you so much armor for so cheap. But in every other class and deck, gaining armor on turn 1 doesn't help you gain board control or tempo. It just makes you go minus 1 in card advantage. There's a reason why cards that exclusively heal your hero have never really seen any play. And during those times where you do really need the healing, most other options let you do so immediately on your turn. Your Bashi Offering, on the other hand, requires you to wait a turn and hope your opponent doesn't kill your 0-2 mid. It's honestly baffling to me why Blizzard made it so hard to get its effect off, and not even for one that immediately impacts the board state. I think they could buff it to be a 0-3 or even a 0-4, so it can at least be a greedier, niche form of healing. But without that change, Gurubashi's Offering definitely deserves to be called the worst neutral epic card of all time, somehow being the perfect mix of awful and forgettable. Alright, and that's the list. If you have any ideas that you'd like to see turn into videos, or notice anything we miss, be sure to comment them down below in the comments. 